As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the weekend? Well, we've got college uh, hoops, March Madness going on, so I had to take a winner from there. And I had to go with Gonzaga. Ten sweet 16s in a row. <laughs> is that like, is that one of the best like stretches in college sports that we've seen that is the least talked about? How is it 10 or 9? Because I read 9. Well, maybe it's, well. Does 2020 I, not count? I think maybe that's it. Let's call it 10 then because I. Two years, 9 straight sweet 16s. No, I, I am. No, no, I let's just call it 10 because I'm fairly confident Gonzaga goes to the sweet 16 that season. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's right. There's that's a pattern just, here. It's a crazy accomplishment with, you know, there's been years where maybe they weren't expected to do as much. There's been other years whenever they've been a massive favorite and to not fall victim to one of the, the things that we see every year is the, the the high seed go down and it's just it's incredible is is different like i think right you think of kansas as one of the the premier names in college basketball and they ain't close to that for sweet 16s i mean that's crazy over that that stretch so uh awesome now they knocked off kansas it wasn't a full strength Kansas. They were tired. You could tell that they just didn't have it. It was a down year for them. Well, <laughs> I think Houston sent them with their tail between their legs into the into March Madness. Well, maybe they shouldn't have been there. They got a hell of a break at the end of their first round game against Sanford. That block was absolutely clean. Now you don't know if Sanford goes down and hits a shot and wins the game. Who knows? But it it was it was one of those situations where you go. Did Kansas get the break they needed? Could this be an interesting, <laughs> unexpected deep run? And then Gonzaga just absolutely smacked them around late in that second half. Yeah. Yeah. That they was, ran that out of juice. Crazy. You're right. Yeah. Ran out of, ran out of juice. Like they didn't have a, the rotation that they had expected and missing one of your best players is, is obviously a factor for them. But, um, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Kansas. You know, I, I think the invincibility cloak that they've been wearing in the big 12 for some time, I, it, it's different, especially with Arizona coming to town as well. Uh, big 12 is, is not getting any easier whenever it comes to hoops. And there's going to be some more, some more uh, competition there at the top for Kansas, but, Maybe ultimately that makes them better, but I had to go with Gonzaga. What an impressive feat uh, by Mark Few and those guys. Honestly, I, I've talked about this a lot. I like to predict who your winner of the weekend, who your loser of the weekend are going to be, because we don't talk about it, which is which makes it fun. I really thought you were going to go with OU women's basketball. Come on, man. They got the <laughs> win. What did we do? It was, I, I won't lie, the way that that thing started, not good, but it was such a dramatic finish against Florida Gulf Coast. They shoot the open three. I'm going, no, 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 not over time, not over time. And whew, a sigh of relief for Jenny Baradchek and the Sooners. Whew. What, now their band is a stud. Is, yeah, uh, needed some big plays there late. Now, Gulf Coast has been kind of like the uh, the giant killer over the last couple of years, right? Yeah, that's why I was very uncomfortable. They had been... <laughs> You know, they had been that in that 512 game two years in a row and won it. Yeah. Hmm. So what? Now we got Indiana tomorrow. Indiana in their own house. Doable. It's doable. Get that win. win. Going to be aesthetically pleasing jersey matchup. Red and white, white and red. That'll be nice to look at. It will be good. It will be good. I I really want them to win because I, they deserve a sweet 16 berth. They deserve it. They do. The program do. has been building and building. Now it's time to let's seize the moment, ladies. Here we go. I feel good about it. I feel good about it. Who do you have as your loser of the weekend? Well, I usually have 
Otani in my uh, my winners and losers as a winner. It usually has to do with the unbelievable sum of money or some incredible feat that's never been accomplished in Major League Baseball before. And I don't know, maybe that's what this is. I, I have no idea what's going on here. I guess Otani's been apparently a victim of some theft or I don't know what by his interpreter that we always saw with him everywhere he went. They were connected at the hip. And I guess just over the last couple of days, there's been some very weird things happening. They found a, there's been a bunch of what uh, wires coming from Otani's bank account to pay off what I guess was gambling debt supposedly accumulated by the interpreter. And that all gets questioned and talked about. I guess ESPN had some leads about it, started to, to ask questions, and then Somewhere along the line, it turned from paying off gambling debt to just straight up theft, and Otani didn't know about it. I don't know. It's kind of hard to follow the story, Gabe. But well, that's because it's two completely different stories that I think were what a day or two apart. Yeah, and part of it is like the first story is well, he got all these gambling debt. He was embarrassed. He couldn't pay it off. Otani helped him out by wiring the money. And then after that, Otani's like, wait a second, what's the story? I I guess what the interpreter was telling him wasn't what the interpreter was telling the team and ESPN. And he found out about it through his new interpreter and was like, wait, what? <laughs> That's I, crazy, dude. You add another interesting wrinkle to it. Mike Trout has said multiple times that Otani speaks solid English. Well, I kind of wondered, like, at what point is he... So that's where it gets... That's where it gets even more complicated. I I don't know. You come out... The whole thing seems strange. You come out... A a spokesperson for Otani, which I guess was a new spokesperson, and the interpreter come out and say, hey... Shohei covered the gambling debt to that bookie in California. Then lawyers get involved, and that story completely changes to it being theft and Otani knowing nothing about it. Well, which is it, man? Well, I think there's three possible scenarios. Scenario one, he paid the gambling debt, and they're worried about the optics of him paying off the gambling debt. Second one is he didn't know about it, didn't know where the wires were going or that the wires occurred, so it was theft. And the third is he ran up some huge gambling debt and the interpreter's taking the fall for him. Is it bad that option three feels kind of... I mean, because changing the story that dramatically, the guy was in the dugout. I mean, yeah. they're over there playing. It was in, in Schultz. Like they're they're over there playing baseball. He wasn't acting. He wasn't treating the guy like it's a guy that stole a bunch of money for four and a half million dollars. Yeah. I did, all I know, and, and I I assume we're gonna get more details about this. Let's just hope neither of them bet on baseball. Because. If the bets were on baseball, it's going to be a big problem. And I don't know how long Otani's suspension would be, but that would be an absolute disaster for Major League Baseball. If he's betting on college hoops, he's betting on the NBA, who cares? That That is not illegal in, in Major League Baseball. But if there's some baseball bets in there, that's all of a sudden this really odd story turns into the biggest story baseball's had in a long, long time. And said, this guy is the face of the league. We, we talk very little baseball 
on this podcast. And when we talk baseball, about 50% of the time, it's about Otani. Right. Yeah. So the changing of the story, just the way that it feels, is the biggest name in baseball. He's the most famous baseball player in the world. This feels like it's on the edge of being an absolute disaster for Major League Baseball. I, but I, we're going to have to wait and see what the, what the truth is if we ever get it. I, I don't know, man. Which, you know, let me say this. The, the availability of gambling to be able to do it by your phone anywhere you go at all hours is a very bad combination with young guys that have a ton of money, spend a lot of time on the road, like looking for some type of excitement, like you know as well as I do. Gambling in the NFL locker room on cards, on paper, rock, scissors, on throwing a tape ball from your ankle into a trash can. Like it doesn't matter what it is. There's big stakes gambling a lot in locker rooms. And now that you can do it on your phone, it's I would I would bet that. 80% of professional athletes are gambling on sports in some capacity. And it may be higher than that. Whether you just, it's like daily you can't bet on your sport. Or, right. Right. I, I don't know what major league baseball is going to do if they find out he was betting on baseball. And there's a Twitter thread out there, this anonymous account that's got like, Hey, there were some bets, big bets placed. In Otani's, I think I want to say it was like his hometown, and it was days that Otani was pitching. No one knows if they're credible or not, but a lot of people were quote tweeting going, hey, if this stuff's true, whoa. Wow. So I, I don't know how deep this thing goes. I hope like he was wiring the money overseas and they were placing those bets overseas. Is that what that was? Or well, it like he there were sizable bets being made on how many runs he would give up, how many runs the opponent would score, that type of stuff. Gotcha. That's that's what this completely anonymous Twitter account was putting out. But there was a lot of detail in the tweets. Well, hey, man, you can... You can't give them credibility, though. Like, you, you just right. can't. But it did make you wonder. Part of the reason I, I need an interpreter to walk around with me all the time to where I can just claim, well, I, I didn't know there's, you know, it's kind of lost in translation. You know, I just, I don't know what happened. I, <laughs> I it's like misled. the Dave Chappelle stayed up. I didn't know I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it is, it is. On the brink of disaster for Major League Baseball. That's that's yeah. all I know. Yeah. Wow. Not the attention the Dodgers were hoping they'd get when they signed the guy. My goodness. No kidding. Wow. Let's get to my winner and loser. But first, attention business owners, you need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurek is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from many insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order to design a cost-effective, comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. If your business partners with Insurica, you'll save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk. If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at Insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A dot com. And head to opolisclothing.com for our podcast merchandise and the best OU gear out there. That's O-P-O-L-I-S clothing.com. Use promo code TED, T-E-D, for 10% off. That's opolisclothing.com. Use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off. We should, we should probably come up with something that people could buy and wear to the spring game. That just crossed my mind. Is it too late? No. We got a, almost a month. Okay. We'll 
I'll send some text messages. Yeah. Try to get try to get something lined up. All right, for my winner of the weekend, we do not talk a lot of OU women's gymnastics on here. It has a lot to do with us not knowing <laughs> anything about gymnastics, people. That's the only reason, okay? But they won their third straight Big 12 title, and they did it with the highest NCAA team score in history. Sounds pretty dang good to me, Ted. Yeah, it's crazy that they uh, they just keep setting records and getting better and better. It's they are the juggernaut of of NCAA gymnastics right now. Incredibly impressive with what they, with what they do. No I don't doubt. know how they do it. I don't know. It's like they've been so good previously, and it's like every, they're just handing out perfect tens left and right. I guess I'm shocked that they got the highest score in history, which they probably have like the top five high scores or something crazy, but I mean, it's impressive. No doubt. Now I also thought about going with formula one been a while since we talked some formula one and because for just wins everything except for this weekend, Ferrari with the one, two uh, signs and Leclerc finish in the Australian grand prix. Now, it could have something to do with part of Verstappen's car just kind of blowing up, but Hey, congrats, Ferrari. Way to go. Nicely done. It, so did someone, I just kind of scanned the headlines. Did someone, did the leader crash on the final lap? I and Ferrari yeah, it, went one, two, just, and Hamilton went out of the race as well. Both per se double E limb did not. Well, it was, uh, it was George Russell and it was not a, not a good situation. It oh looked, boy. It's, it's fine. Sounds like he's fine, but it was kind of gnarly looking, but I am, I'm happy for formula one. Someone other than for Stappen. little, little change up for a change guy had what, what, like 10 in a row. It was crazy. Like easily. Like not just 10 in a row. It's like, he's on a totally different level than everyone else. Yeah. Now my winner of the weekend there's always someone in the in the tournament that kind of emerges as America's guy. Right. And I thought it may be the Golki guy. That's his name, right? From Oakland that hit all the threes. Mm -hmm. He kind of felt like maybe he was going to be the guy, but no, no, no. I right, had to battle it out to see who's the guy. Yeah. He ran into the DJ Bird show, baby. I, the big fella, the big lefty, the sweet feet. I feel like he's become the face of the tournament and they, the NC state beats Oakland in overtime to send NC state to the sweet 16 for the first time in nine years. And big DJ Burns 24 and 11 and was awesome in the overtime. And NC state was one of those teams. They were a bubble team. And they have absolutely gotten hot at the right time. Seven straight postseason wins for the Wolfpack. Won the ACC tournament. What beat Carolina in yeah. the final of that? And you look at DJ Burns. Dude is on a heater. Twenty in the ACC tourney final to beat Carolina. Had sixteen in their win over Tech in the first round. In twenty four for them to beat Oakland and send them to the Sweet Sixteen. And all I can think about is how he would look at offensive tackle. Oh, man. That's all I can think about, Ted. I watch the guy. I see the touch. I see the movement skills. He's not an NBA player. We all know that. We all know that. He's listed at 6'9", 275. I think I would go out on a limb and say that's probably a little light. That there is no way in hell that guy weighs 275 pounds. He weighs 300 pounds at the very least. The very least. <laughs> and DJ, you're the face of the tournament. You're America's guy right now. But let's just see what a pass set looks like. That's all I'm saying. Hey, you know, whenever he gets that ball and gets that, li that little running left-handed hook shot. Oh, it's I mean, sweet. It's almost, it's almost like a, a pin pull, you know, oh. just running that little hoop. Oh, don't get me excited, Ted. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop it. Hey, hey. In all seriousness, just, I don't know, a year, a year of training, year of technique development. I, I'm just saying, do you want to be rich or not, DJ? I, you know, it's, 
it's shockingly pleasant to watch some inside basketball, right? To see a big post guy going to work and, you know, he's a really good passer when they come down to double and triple team him, finding guys out on the wing or just carving or, up uh, the Oakland zone. Yeah. it It's fun to watch. Now, I, I remember I watched that just happened on the ACC championship game with North Carolina. And I was like, I like this team. I liked them a lot after they won that game. I could have been one of the reasons we, it was one of the reasons we didn't make the tournament, but um, they've, they were one of my favorites going in and they've been fun to watch so far. I, I hope the, the fun continues. We'll see. I, I'm just saying, just consider it. Just consider it. I'm sure the football staff there has walked by him in the cafeteria once or twice and go, Hey, what do you think? I, I think everyone's considered. It wouldn't shock me if he got drafted. <laughs> while, <laughs> while the tournament's going Just on. goes through like a combine <laughs> in a team in the seventh round. So, yeah. We'll, We'll take a flyer. Why take not? A flyer on it. Let's go. No, he. But he's he's having a heck of a tournament, how and it's he, fun, man. How old is he? Is he? He's a. I want to say he's a senior. So I'm guessing he's 22 or 23. Let's give it a quick Google. This is Elite Podcasting. 23 years old. Okay. Yeah. So hey, that's the thing about O linemen, though. The closer you get to 27, 28, 29. That's when the old man strength, that's when you, that that's the prime for alignment. So we just, we just got to get him the fundamentals down. He's about to get drafted. Side unseen. We'll work with him for two or three years. Practice squad. No big deal. Remember, no Hey, pressure. vital. Remember the guy from Baylor? He ended up on a practice squad. Yep. Now I was told that he wasn't the most punctual guy and maybe didn't take it very seriously, but Hey, he was there, so I I don't know, but hopefully we can send you to see DJ Burns ball out. But yeah, want to see him in football pads real bad. I won't lie. <laughs> My loser of the weekend, Kentucky. Uh, it, as much fun as it was watching Oakland knock him off, and as much fun it was watching Golkey bury ten threes on him, and all the stuff he had to say after the game, I loved it. But. <laughs> John Calipari, man. What, 2021 missed the tournament? 2022 lost in the first round. 2023 lost in the second round. 2024 lost in first round. And remember, that includes losses to St. Peter's and now Oakland. I mean, you're supposed to be that guy. You're bringing in all the five stars. You're sending all these guys to the league. Got to win some tournament games, man. I mean... And everyone's bringing up the $33 million buyout. I don't think people realize. I, I've been to a Kentucky basketball game. I, I've been there. It's a much bigger deal than football there. They will pay the $33 million. And that in that arena huge? Isn't it like huge. 20, over 20000 It's huge. One of my high school teammates played there. And it was, it is a big deal. So if A and M can pay Jimbo seventy whatever, Kentucky will pay Cal thirty three to go away. But I just I don't know what they do. You got all these ESPN analysts, Jay Billis, saying oh, it would be crazy if they fired him. I, the fans seem over it. <laughs> I, I it just feels like a bad situation at Kentucky. Well, it, it's a it's a really bad result in a situation that. Already, it hasn't been great over the last couple of years, right? With, you know, he said some things and been real defensive. And and then you hear him post game, you know, just saying like, well, you know, I just, apparently you just can't do it the way we've done it anymore. You know, you got all these transfer portal guys, the older guys, older teams, but he's done that too and, and not had success. So, I don't know. It's remember they took Shebway from West Virginia. Yeah, it almost seems like he's not even acknowledging any shortcomings and just passing it off on. Well, it's what basketball's become. You know, I I don't know. It's weird. 
I have always been a massive fan of head coaches that take the blame, right? I just think that's what comes with being the leader of an organization. Things go wrong. You fall short of expectations. Like you put it on yourself. And I don't get a lot of that from John Calipari. <laughs> I just I don't. Know. So I, I don't know, but while things are bad at Kentucky, uh, they may be worse at LSU right now. What, what is the article about Kim Mulkey going to say? I would need to know. know. When's this thing dropping, Ted? I don't know. Her statement, that was, what, three and a half, four minutes of prepared statement the day before you're playing a tournament game? Doesn't seem good. I don't know what's in the article. I don't know if anyone knows. That Mulkey probably knows because they sent her a big old list of questions. Hey, would you like to answer these? Sounds like this article has been building for a long time. Here's the way I view it, though. When something like this, like, okay, oh, uh, I don't know if there's another, I'm just, I was going to think of a good example, but if an article comes out that Kim Mulkey is really difficult to deal with, hard on players and assistant coaches, um, says rotten things to players, I... <laughs> Is anyone going to be surprised by any of that? No. She does it on camera constantly. So like, if it's just one of those pieces, it's going to fall really flat. You better have something in there. You know what I'm saying? It feels like there's got to be something in there for her to address it the way that she did. To go hire a law firm for defamation? Yeah. Yeah. So I... I don't know what it's going to be, but, and I don't know if this makes me a bad person or not. It makes, it makes the women's tournament even more intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> like you've got the Caitlin Clark piece and Hey, did you see her? It was slow motion. It was an accident. It kind of looked like she got punched in the face in that first round. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I'm surprised. It's not like the top news. It feels like every time she gets bumped, it, you know, it, it's either huge news on the opponent or huge news on her flopping or something. So I'm shocked it wasn't thrown uh, directly into my face that it happened. I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll find it somehow. But. You, you just clearly weren't online enough. <laughs> it was all over the place. No. But I was actually, I was driving back and I was listening to, listening to college hoops nonstop and it, like listen to the start of that game. So, yeah. Well, I... I'll say this though, with with Mulkey, the most shocking thing that I found out so far, I had no idea that she won two national championships as a player at Louisiana Tech and won a gold medal with the '84 Olympics. I didn't know that she could ball. There you go. I mean, she could ball. Now, you'll be glad to know that the accidental punch to Caitlin Clark's face did result in an intentional foul, two free throws, and possession of the basketball. <laughs> well, there you go. It is what it is, man. She's the she's the most famous player in college basketball. She's gonna get she's gonna get some special treatment. Just deal with it, people. But yeah, the women's tournament coming into it, it was already intriguing. You throw this Kim Mulkey, I don't know if you want to call it a scandal, development, whatever it is, whatever it's gonna be. For me, it just makes me want to pay more attention to to it i am i, know, I am well, drawn to year, the drama last year it was it was uh it has to be the most attention ever on ncaa women's tournament and i'm i'm guessing that this year is probably going to be the same at the end yeah. there's going to be a dramatic conclusion to this thing somehow i am i'm all for it hopefully the sooners can keep it rolling come on let's go ladies that all you got to do is beat indiana in their own building no it's big fine. deal well, hey, quickly, we don't have to spend much. Do you like the the way they do it where they host instead of all yes. neutral site? I think that's I think you cool should too. be rewarded for having a successful regular season. I kind of think so, too. It, it's kind of how I feel about the early games in the college football playoff. Yeah. Just. I like it. Yeah. 
and it, it creates a it's a better atmosphere I think in my so opinion too. i think it results in better atmospheres all right